I'm ready. Well, friends, we'd like to welcome everybody to this special occasion. Uh, and we'd also like to give a warm welcome to those who are on Zoom. What a wonderful day for a wedding. You know, well, I guess any day would be a wonderful day for a wedding, as long as you have two people who are in love and are going to spend the rest of their lives together. What a wonderful arrangement Jehovah has given us. For Ed and Dietra, this will be the start of a wonderful life together. And soon, Dietra, I don't have a watch, but in about 20 minutes, you'll be Dietra White. Isn't that wonderful? Remember, Adam and Eve, Adam needed a helper for his complement to fulfill Jehovah's commission, and that was to fill the earth and subdue it. And Jehovah brought the first couple together, Adam and Eve, and he married them, and we are reminded in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, that man will leave his father, his mother, and they will become one flesh. This means permanent. Now, the world <clears throat> view of marriage is different than Jehovah's view, because about 50% of, of all marriages end up in divorce or some type of separation. This is not an option we want to encounter. In 2 Corinthians 13, 11, it talks about Jehovah being a God of love a God of a happy God and a permanent honorable marriage reflects his fine qualities. So no matter what we do, he gives us the best guidance in a loving way. <laughs> the apostle Paul reminded us 
to marry in the Lord. And that's what you're doing here today. So how can your marriage last in love and happiness? Remember this important step in your lives for both of you. The key is to put Jehovah first. That means to love Jehovah with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Study his word. The Bible is compared to no other. It never leads you astray. It's not opinionated. It doesn't have any hidden agenda. Who knows more than Jehovah? What's so wonderful about Mary and Dietrich Ed is you found someone who you love just as you found someone who loves you, I should say, just as much as you love Jehovah too. Now picture this, if you and Detroit were in a foot race or maybe even on a horse, racing to see who loved Jehovah more, you guys would be in what they call a photo finish. <laughs> Both of your noses would be at that line at the same time. And that's very important because you need somebody who loves Jehovah as, as much as you do. Because Jehovah is going to be your stronghold. He will guide you to success. He will be your protection. And he will never, never fail you. So let's talk about the husband's role for a few minutes. You can loosen your tie a little bit. <laughs> now we know that Jehovah appointed man head of household. Just as Christ is head of the congregation. Such a wonderful arrangement. Marriage will sometimes be a tribulation to the flesh. No one agree with that. <laughs> But don't hasten to conclude during these tough times that I make a mistake. Remember, the formula for success is to put Jehovah first. Jehovah will help you to be a humble husband because headship involves sound judgment, not rusty judgment, sound judgment, especially when you rely on Bible principles. You and Dietrich must mutually be supportive in your love for Jehovah. It will strengthen your marriage Study God's word and pray together. Be consistent in your family worship. This is your responsibility as the head. Don't be a tyrant. There is no better way than Jehovah's way. Don't use the world as a guide because it will swallow you up. Stay spiritually strong because the world will make you think, Ed, that success is to provide riches and materialistic value to your marriage. But Ephesians 5, 25, 5, 25, 28, and 29 gives a perfect guide. Let's read that. That's Ephesians 5, 28, and 29. Sun's blocking me a little bit, but I can see it. And 25 says, husbands, continue loving your wives just as the Christ also loved the congregation and gave himself up for it. And in 28, it says, In the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. A man who loves his wife loves himself. And 29 says, For no man ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cherishes it just as Christ does the congregation. So in 28, I mean 25, it says to continue loving Dietra. It didn't say occasionally. It said continue to love Dietra. And then in uh, 28, it says love her as your own body. And 29 sums it up and it says no man hates his own body. How much time do you spend in the gym? Yeah. So when Dietra's having that bad day, recognize it ahead of time. Be observant in your marriage. Let her depend on your comfort. Build her up because she's special to you. Remember, she's also your Christian sister. And her vows, dedication to Jehovah, is more important than hers to your vows. Don't be violently angry, or by word or by action. Don't downgrade her. Be polite to her. Let her know she is your closest companion. She is a gift from Jehovah. You have prayed for this day for a long time. And trust me, I was there with him all through these prayers and all through the times that he was looking for his perfect mate and he found her because you were patient with your prayers and Jehovah took care of you. Remember some key points to help guide you. 
Treat your marriage as sacred. Speak respectfully to her. Cultivate kindness and compassion. Show humility. Don't hastily take offense. Know when to be quiet. <laughs> Listen with empathy. Make a habit to express your appreciation. Be quick to forgive. Stay committed. Self-sacrifice reinforces commitment. Effort brings rewards. And you know what, Ed? I think you got it, partner. All right, so you can relax a little bit. Breathe, okay? Looking a little pale, but I think he'll make it. Now, Dietra, if Jehovah has a role for the husband, his love for you is just as important as the wife. You are a compliment to him. Your husband loves you, and he's going to love you more and more each day. And he's going to give you that honor and, that, and, and, give you digni and make you dignified. And he's not told to show you. I mean, he is told to show you honor. I'm sorry. Let's read 1 Peter 3, 7. I'm just a little nervous, not much. That's 1 Peter 3, 7. And it says, you husbands, in the same way, continue dwelling with them according to knowledge. Assign them honor, as we just spoke about, as to a weaker vessel, the feminine fin one, since they are also heirs with you of the undeserved favor of life in order for your prayers not to be hindered. Prayer is important to all of us. Nobody wants their prayers hindered. So that's not going to be a problem for you, Deidre. You're an heir with Ed, not inferior. Jehovah loves you and wants you to be treated with respect. Let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 and 24. And let's see what your role can be. That's Ephesians 5, 24, 22 to 24, I'm sorry. And 22 says, let wives be subjected to their husbands as to the Lord, because the husband is head of his wife, just as the Christ is head of the congregation, being a savior of this body. 24, in fact, as the congregation is in subjection to the Christ, wives should also be to their husbands in everything. So the Bible principle here promotes marital success and happiness. Being in subjection pleases Jehovah because you are showing that you appreciate his arrangement. Now, some of Ed's decisions may not be the best, <laughs> but your, depend your deep love for Ed shows that you are not in competition. Remember Ephesians 5, 3, 3, have that deep, deep respect for him. So forgive Ed when he makes those minor mistakes. Be willing to make sacrifices for your partner. Provide him that valuable input. Remember, you are sitting here for a reason, because you love that man. You can smile. There you go. <laughs> and I believe it, it's been for a while, because I've been knowing you guys. And I know you've been showing him that you loved him and you were smiling and doing all the things and you know what? <laughs> and that's good. <laughs> And again, I can say to you that, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Dietrich, now you can relax. <laughs> you don't look as pale as Ed, as Ed did, so. Because this is the time where the sister is a stronger vessel when you're sitting here like that. She's, she's ready, she's strong, mm -hmm. I got this. A husband, a wife are like a pilot and a co-pilot with the same flight plan. Even when challenges arise, each one thinks the same is what you want to do. It's not a solo act. Matthew 19, 6, remember, one flesh. Remember, humility and modesty is, will help you focus on your strengths. Be quick to settle matters, as brought out in Matthew 5, 25. Be quick to settle those matters. You know, the longer you let it go, or go on, the worse it's going to be. 
there's no such thing as silence. You just got to know when to be quick to be quiet, but just to, <laughs> but there's no silence where you want to let it just linger on and on and on because it doesn't do any good. Look for ways to make each other smile. When you smile at Dietra Ed, she will give you her heart. Cook him his favorite meal. And you know what that is? Food. <laughs> Surprise her, Ed, with anything that will make her smile. Show her that love. Put love attached to what you're going to give her. Don't be cheap. This is your comfort. This is your comfort. Tell her you love her daily. There's an old song I used to remember, and it went something like this. It said, I love you more today than yesterday, but not as much as tomorrow. Remember that when it's quiet. Sing that to her. Let her know that. Let's read our final scripture here. And this is truly good for your future together in Jehovah's Arrangements. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to read verse 4 and 8. That's 1 Corinthians Chapter 13, we're going to read 4 through 8. Let me get there. Sorry. Well, it is God's ministry to you for your good, but you are doing what is best. Woo, Tom. Wrong scripture, I'm sorry. No, that's not it. I'm sorry, I wrote that down wrong somewhere. I'm sorry about that. But listen, love never fails. Love says it never fails. Let's say that together three times. Love never fails. Love never fails. Love never fails. Thank you, Jehovah. Now, let's see if we can hear your, your, your knees knocking. We're going to get to the most important part, the vows. We're going to start with you, Ed. I, Ed, take you, Deidre. I, Ed, take you, Deidre. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To love and to cherish in accordance with the divine law. To love and to cherish in accordance with the divine law. As set forth in the Holy Scriptures. As set forth in the Holy Scriptures. For Christian, whoop, excuse me. For Christian for husbands. For Christian husbands, thank you. <laughs> for as long as we both. For as long as we both. Shall live together shall live together on earth on earth according to God's marital arrangement according to God's marital arrangements now you Deidre <laughs> I Deidre I Deidre take you Ed take you Ed to be my wedded husband to be my wedded husband to love and to cherish to love and to cherish and deeply respect and deeply respect in accordance with the divine law in accordance with the divine law as set forth in the holy scriptures as set forth in the holy scriptures for christian wives for christian wives for as long as we both for as long as we both shall live together shall live together on earth on earth according to god's marital arrangements according to god's <laughs> marital arrangements that's good they're smiling i like that <laughs> They're enjoying this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now let's uh, have our rings, please. Ed, you can put the ring on her finger. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For this ring, these rings is an outward and visible sign signifying unto all those uniting of this man and this woman in the bonds. Oh, I thought you had it on. Mm. 
Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Kiss the bride? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you said mouth it. <laughs> For so much as, let me go back to it. This ring or rings is an outward and visible sign signifying into all the uniting of this man and this woman in the bonds of matrimony. For so much as Detra and Ed have co covenanted before Jehovah God, these witnesses to accept each other in wedlock, I as an ordained minister and by the authority conferred upon me by the Holy Scriptures and the state of Arizona pronounce that they are husband and wife. Mm. What God has yoked together, let no man take apart. You can kiss your bride. And now let's offer a prayer to Jehovah. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you, to this ma marriage gathering, Brother Ed White and his lovely wife, Deetra White. Thank you. There we go.